DHPA – simple component with simple solution. Today we will write our custom solution. I'll be using React to create this component, and we will start by adding states for the year and month values. First state is for year, where the default value is the current year variable. Then we will do the same but for the month value, where the default value is the current month variable. Now let's describe our variables. So current year is just new date with get full year, and that's all. For current months, we will use new date get months plus one, where plus one we use to adjust the order since January defaults to zero. We will assume it's the first month. Let's check how it works, and it works well. The next step is to add a label and select for years. Label will have just text. Select will have a value equal to our year state, and we will use an additional function to display the year options. Generate year options function will receive current year as an argument, and it will return an array of years. The value will use to render our year value. So let's add our value and our options. Between our options tags, we'll include value. Also, don't forget to add e value and value property to have access to this option from JavaScript. Now let's implement this function. It will get the current year as an argument, and then, using array from, we'll create an empty array, where the length of this array will correspond to the range of years that we want to see in the selection list. Then we need to iterate by this array and return a value. To get the value, we just need to subtract the current year minus the current year offset. We use offset to start years at the current year minus this number and plus i. Years range will be 21, but you can use any other values. Current year offset is 10. 10 means before and after the current year. And now let's add on change handler for our select to have the opportunity to change the year. Everything what we need just to pass event target value to our set year function. And now we can change the value of our select. Let's also add HTML4 for our label and ID to our option to improve our accessibility. Let's add our ID and the next step is to add the same thing but to select the months. Let's just copy past and replace the year with the test with the months. Let's also replace set year function to set months and instead of generate year options we will have generate months options, which will receive the current months as an argument and then return value and the label. The value is our months index and label is just text. Let's copy our generate year option function and read generate months option. It doesn't receive any arguments, we have only 12 months there. So we need read array with 12 elements where value is our index plus 1 to adjust months index for user friendly numbering from 1 to 12. And label is just a text. To receive our text for our months, we need to create get months name function, which will help us to get month name by index. Everything what we need to do here is to convert month index to month name using toLocalString function, where we pass long string to our month e to have full name of the month. And now our select for month value works as expected. Almost. We just need to replace value for our months from year to months. So let's check it and fix it. Now it works as expected. The next step is to create our calendar. Let's add our function create calendar, which receives year and months as arguments. So let's pass here year and months. This function will return a table which will show days of the months. So now let's create and implement our create calendar function. So let's add here read a lender, which receives two arguments here a month. And now let's start describing our function. First of all, we need to initialize date to first of the selected months. To make it, we will write new date and pass year and months minus one as arguments. 
Then we'll create rows for table and cells within a row. They will have empty array as a default value for both rows and cells. At the end we'll return a semantic table with t-head and t-body. We'll include days of the week to t-head from Monday to Sunday. And to make it, we need to iterate by array of days of the week, which will contain our days of the week as a string, such as man for Monday, etc. So let's add our days of the week array, which is undefined for now, and iterate by this array. Inside our map, we'll add th tag with the day of the week. So let's add our th and include day name between them. So let's add it. And I guess I missed one bracket, so let's fix it. But now let's read our days of the week array because we have very noticeable error on our right screen. Inside the array we have seven names of each day of the week. Also don't forget to add e to our th element. We can use day name as a value of e. The next step is to include empty rows for now to the body of the table, which will include our all days of the month. First we need to iterate by every day of the month until the month of the date no longer matches the input months. In the agent we have reached the next month. So let's add our while loop where we need to check that our date within the current month. So it will be like month minus one. And after every step we move to the next day by using set date function and everything what we need just to pass date plus one, where date we can receive from get date function. So let's add new variable on date and using just get date function we receive the current date. Now we are able to iterate by current months. Let's open on sol and add on sol log inside our loop to check if everything goes well. So let's add here on sol log and everything works fine. We can see all numbers of the current months. The next step is to add our cells. So we will do it by pushing td element with date to the cells array. So let's open our td element and include our date. And nothing happens. I mean, we don't see anything on the screen. It's because we need to add our cells to the rows array. So let's add our if statement when we need to add our cells to the rows. First of all, let's check if it's the last day of the month, then we need to add our cells to the rows. The last day can be on Monday, Tuesday, etc. So it will be a bad idea just to check if it's the last day of the week. And here we need to push tier tags, which include our cells. Tier tag is responsible for row, while TD is responsible for cells. So let's add our E here, it will be just date to string. And as you can see, we successfully render the first data on the screen. Now we need to reset cells for the new row. So we just need to check if the dates are within the week. So after every week we need to push our cells to rows. So I guess that let's check our code one more time, everything looks good. And after our rows push, we need to reset our cells. So let's do it here and let's change fonts to let to do it. And let's refresh the page and inspect our DOM. So let's open our elements. And as you can see, we render all our TR elements within one row. It happens because we didn't add one more if statement. So let's do it now. Everything what we need to get the current day and check if it's the end of the week or not. So I will use get the function to receive the current day. And if it's the last day of the week, then we need to push our cells. As usual, I use some variables which we declare later. So don't think that you miss something. We will have two extra variables, days in the week which will be 7 and last day of the week which will be 6. Let's add also here extra space to make it visible within the screen. 
And now let's create our variable at the top of the file to have more readable solution. Here we will have days in V which will be 7 and last day of the V which will be 6. Now let's open our inspector and refresh the page to check if everything works. And I think that something went wrong because I don't see any data. I guess that something wrong with our if statement. And yes, we need to replace and on or. And it looks good. The next step is to add empty cells. It needs when the first day of the month is Tuesday, Wednesday, etc. Everything except Monday. In this case, we need to shift our first day. So let's fill initial empty array cells if month starts in the middle of the week using for loop. So everything what we need just to push td elements, empty td elements. The next step is to create a just v of day function to adjust the v day to start from Monday instead of Sunday. So let's create additional function. This function will receive day in this as an argument. Then in if statement we'll check if day is zero, then the day should be seven. We just convert Sunday from zero to seven. And then we just return day minus one. Just adjust to make Monday index zero. So here we are checking the day index and make it seven and return day minus one as I said previously. Right now we need to use our just day of v function in our for loop and also maybe in if statement as well. So let's add it here as well. And something goes wrong because our calendar shows in red table. Let's take a look at our solution one more time and try to find a mistake which I didn't read calendar function. Let's start from the top. Days, rows, cells look good. For loop looks good as well. In while loop, let's set E to the TD element to have less errors in the console. We can use date as a value. And I see that I use both get date and get day functions, but I need to use only one of them. So let's replace get date in our for loop. And now we created a red table. The next step is to add select day in our calendar. We need to add only event to every cell which is not empty and pass the date to select the date function which we'll create right now. Let's just pass select the date function everywhere and create a new new state. Where select the date will be our value and set select the date is our function. The default value is empty string. To make our select the date visible, let's add input type text which will be read only and will contain selected date. So let's add here input with simple placeholder like selected date and pass value as a selected date. We need to describe how are we going to handle selected date. Because we have too many selected date words, let's read on handle selected date function to understand that it's not just a value, but it's our function, which will receive date and it will save a new selected date. We'll use extra function just to format the date. Also, you can use any format functions which you want, so it's easy to change the logic as you wish. Our format function receives year, months and date as arguments and shows full date. Under the full I mean year, months and date. But if you want, you can use any other format. Up to you. I will use the slice minus two method. It extracts the last two characters from the resulting string. If the string is 0, 3 for much, for example, slice minus two simply returns 0, 3. But if the string is 0, 12 for the sample, it will return just 12 without extra zero. And now let's refresh the page and check the result. But instead of result we see the error. We just need to pass on handle selected date function. Right now we have different name for that argument. And now everything looks good. 
and our component is ready. Feel free to ask any questions and leave your feedback under the video. See you next time. Bye.